Hello, welcome to today's broadcast on how do you give yourself leeway. So come on in, settle in, grab your cup of tea, other beverage, water, whatever you're drinking. Come on in. We're going to start in just a moment. I have to tell you, I'm so funny this way. This is our 146th straight episode. And when I'm interviewing a guest, I get right into it. Like, here's the guest, here's their bio, here's what we're doing. But when it's me speaking with you, I just want to give you a moment to settle in. And I remember that we used to do these uh, the, like stretches at the beginning or the end. So I encourage you to just roll your shoulders back, maybe stand up, walk around your office. You've probably been sitting. So roll your shoulders back. And as you do, fill your lungs and really breathe as we get into leeway. Leeway, a good thing to do when we're talking about leeway is to take a breath to roll your shoulders back and take a breath. I'm thinking about leeway recently because of things that I've heard from my coaching clients. People are saying, hey, Sanya, I'm doing this and I'm doing this and it did take a few days off back in the summer. So I'm just, and, and as you hear them speak, I talked a little about the body, the somatic experience. I'm doing this and I'm doing this and I'm doing this. Sometimes you see this happen with people. So my question to you today, because this is what I've been hearing a lot with leaders that I'm working with and that my colleagues who are coaches are also working with. My question to you today is, what does leeway look like to you? How can you give yourself some leeway? What does leeway look like for you? And specifically, let's start with a question. Where do you wanna give yourself leeway? I'll rattle off a few options. Do you want to give yourself more leeway in your housework? Do you want to give yourself more leeway at your work and specifically within your work? What is it? Is it about the process in which you do things? Is it about how you're doing reaching out to your colleagues or your clients? Where do you want to give yourself leeway? Is it on the home front, the personal front? Where do you want to give yourself leeway? So let me know this first because let's let's ground what we're talking about in real things. And today I'm going to show you three ways that you can, in a research-based way, give yourself more leeway so that really, what's the goal? I mean, let's start there. Why would we even want to give ourselves leeway? When I'm speaking with leaders that I'm coaching, it's not that they say to me, Senya, I need to give myself leeway. No, again, sort of thinking about rolling our shoulders back and taking a deep breath. It's not that people are saying, I need to give myself leeway. It's that people are saying, I'm doing this and I'm doing this and I'm taking care of this and this is happening at work and this and then all of this is happening with school and kids or relationships or parents. There's a lot going on. And so we take a breath. I keep rolling my shoulders back because when you roll your shoulders sort of up and then back, in a sense, you're really opening up everything in front of you. And you're a little bit maybe even opening up your lung space where you can breathe into. So practically speaking, where do you want to give yourself leeway? And then let's jump into our three. Excuse me, there are good steps at the door. I'll be there in 10 minutes. Okay, but we won't have it Where do you want to give yourself leeway? All right, so let's grab, jump into this. We've got three things to do today. I'll put them all up and then we'll do all of them. Which needs have you felt had, sorry, felt, which needs, you felt, probably felt a lot of needs. Which needs have you fed recently? Nothing time is actually something time. And the three components of self-compassion. This is based on Kristen Neff's research. So what needs have you fed recently or do you need to feed? Nothing time is actually something time and a framework for looking at giving yourself leeway. All right, let's get right into this. When we coach people, we speak to people about what is working for you well and what's not working for you. So if you have, let me just look at what some of you are saying. Uh, okay, so some of you are saying work. Work is a place where you need to give yourself leeway. So think about that. That might actually be more of a discussion or a problem solving session, which is what I like to call a negotiation session, but it might be a problem solving session with your manager. If you need leeway somewhere else, maybe some of the things you might want to refer to are Catherine Britton's dis descriptions of big rocks and having that priority conversation with your manager. What are the priorities? What are you able to do? So I'm seeing a few of you say it in work. 
So suppose that you have a place where you want to give yourself leeway, but you just think, oh, come on, Senya, I can't afford it. I got to keep going. I got to keep moving. Here are the things that I encourage you to consider. Which needs have you fed? So I'm going to put up this uh, illustration, which is from a, an online photo place. And the illustration is from Deposit Photos. And this is an illustration, excuse me, I'm just gonna click to it. This is an illustration of something you've seen before. This is Maslow's hierarchy of needs. And when I ask you which needs have you fed recently, I'm actually specifically, oh, let me put this up, take this off. I'm actually specifically asking you, take a look. Have you taken care of physical needs, food, water, so on? Have you taken care of the things for your safety? And then for love and self-esteem, and then for you getting better and better in life. I know you've seen this before, but what I'm specifically talking about is within this framework. Sometimes we forget even about that bottom layer and we think, all right, well, I'm doing well here and I'm growing here and I'm taking all these things on. So I encourage you to think about the bottom layer and really practically on a practical level. This might almost seem funny to you, but on a practical level, these are the four questions that we always ask our clients about at the end of a phone call when we say, what health action do you want to take on? Do you want to take on a health action in sleep, food, exercise, or meditation? In a sense, how do you want to give yourself leeway? Do you want to make sure you're getting enough sleep? Do you want to make sure you're eating or drinking enough water or putting more vegetables into your day, your food? What do you want to do on exercise? Do you want to do just some number of push-ups or, or stomach crunches in the morning. Is that the base? Is it five of each? What's the minimum that you wanna do? Because when we re-energize something, then that often leads to re-energizing something else. And of course, we ask about meditation. Do you want to go for a walk around your block? Do you want to set your timer for one minute before every expectedly stressful phone call? So let me just wrap up and show what which one we've been talking about. We've been talking about which needs have you fed and have you actually fed the needs of the bottom rung there? I don't know if you can see my cursor, but of the bottom rung, have you actually fed needs like these? That's the question. All right, second item. The second item is that nothing time is actually something time. And this is a discussion that I have regularly with coaches who also care about not getting overexposed and overstressed and so they care about having a balance in life having an integration of their life with going for a walk around the block and even these coaches so people people that i know care about balancing life overall they will sometimes say oh no i read a whole fiction book or i watched the whole season of something and that's nothing time and that doesn't contribute to my growth. And I didn't uh, set, I didn't, uh, here, I'll put this up as well. I didn't self-actualize in that moment. I didn't get better at anything. And when you hear one coach in a group of say five coaches say this, the other coaches will gently nudge and suggest something along these lines. Nothing time is actually something time. For some reason, you needed that nothing time. There is something about that not great for you time. Maybe it is watching a season that you really maybe shouldn't have watched, or it's reading something or looking at something online that you that that cut into the previous thing that we were talking about that might have cut into your sleep. But if you did it, there's something that you were craving. So a further thing to figure out is what are you learning from this? But it, it is not nothing time. <laughs> Somehow that might be the leeway that you needed. All right, so we've gone through which needs have you fed. We've gone through nothing time is something time. And now let me share my screen with you for the next one, which is on uh, self-compassion. I had the I had the really wonderful situation of being able to go to a workshop this weekend on by Kristen Neff on self-compassion. So let me show you, this is at self-compassion.org. And this is a little bit about Kristen Neff. She has been studying self-compassion for so long and has such deep and uh, varied lines of research in self-compassion. The section that I want to show you in the context of today in giving yourself leeway is that she has found three different elements of self-compassion. So this is on her website and they are, oh, I'm sorry. Let me change the banner here so you can see exactly what I'm seeing. She has found three different elements to self-compassion and they are kindness, humanity, and mindfulness. I won't keep this up because it's a lot of words, but please know you can go to self-compassion.org. 
And this is one of three ways that you can give yourself leeway. So again, you can look at the needs that you have fed or haven't fed. You can uh, consider that nothing time is actually something time. And then you can look, all right, so this concept of self-compassion, I don't quite get it, but basically, and I actually love her opening page, so I hope I can show you just literally her homepage. Her homepage with the one phrase on it, I think says it best, which is with self-compassion, we give ourselves the same kindness and care we'd give to a good friend. You've heard me mention this before. You've heard me talk about the 12 rules books that I, book that I really enjoyed. And that in that, there was a section on how we sometimes treat our pets better than we treat ourselves. So uh, you may want to check out Kristen Neff's website. You might want to look into self-compassion. But let's talk about these three. Kindness. And that's just, look, are you going to be harsh with yourself? Or are you going to say, hey, I get it. This is happening. What else can I do? What's working? Just kind of sit with yourself. Humanity. And this is something I learned from Tal ben a decade, over a decade ago, which is bad things are going to happen all the time. And we can either self-criticize ourselves about it, or we can say, look, this is part of it. This is part of everything. Good things happening, bad things happening. It's part of humanity. And then mindfulness, which is really deep in this concept of self-compassion, because it's not sitting for one moment and thinking about nothing and letting the thoughts go through. But it's really listening and being open. If you feel rotten, mindfulness actually says, hey, I feel rotten. That's part of combining mindfulness and humanity. That's part of our common understanding right now. So don't breeze through things. Actually sit with yourself and explore, am I being kind to myself? Is this part of humanity that good things and bad things can happen, that I might contribute to good things or bad things? And mindfulness, what does this feel like? What does it feel like now? So you can actually feel it, have that feeling, and then keep moving. So today has been about what does leeway look like to you? And the three suggestions that I've made are that you can look at what needs have you fed, that nothing time is actually something time, and that you can explore self-compassion. So with this, I just encourage you to check it out. What do you want to do with leeway? Do you want to feed one of these needs? Do you want to do something that may not be ideal for you, but that you may be needing? Or do you want to ask yourself a few questions? What does leeway look like to you? Thanks for joining us. We're delighted to have you here with us. All the best, and we'll see you again. We're here every day, Monday to Friday, 11 a.m. Pacific. Bye.